More often than not, oops questions are asked in the very beginning of the interview. And if you want to make a first impression, you need to know not only the questions, but also how to answer them. I have collated some of the most frequently asked questions and answers, drawing from my experience of 10 years in the industry. Hello friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Somya. Without any further ado, let's just straight away start with the first interview question. What is procedure programming and how is it different from object-oriented programming? Procedure programming is a programming paradigm that is based on the concepts of procedures or functions. It is a list of instructions or given to the computer to perform the task at hand step by step. While object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm that designs software around classes and objects. It is a way of programming that makes the code flexible and extensible. Please note that both of these are ways of programming and not languages as most of us get confused with. Now let's discuss the differences between the two. In object-oriented programming, computer programs make use of objects that interact with each other to change the data and perform some functions. In procedure programming, it is a list of instructions given to the computer for what task it has to perform. Object-oriented programming relies on classes and objects, while procedure programming relies on procedures or functions. In object-oriented programming, the data and functions are bundled into one entity, which is called the object, while in procedure programming, the data and functions are separate and not together. In object-oriented programming, we follow the bottom-up approach, while in procedure programming, we follow the top-down approach. In object-oriented programming, the data is very secure because it is encapsulated in a class. But in procedure programming, the data is not so secure because we don't have any proper way to hide it. The languages that use object-oriented programming are c -sharp, Java, Python, etc. While the languages that were built on the procedure programming were Pascal, Fortran, Cobol. Here ends my first question. Moving on to the next question. What is method overriding and what is method overloading and how are these different? Method overriding is when child class provides a different implementation for the parent class method. While method overloading is when two methods or more have the same name but different signatures. Now I will discuss the differences between the two. In method overloading, the overloaded methods are present in the same class. But in method overriding, the methods are present in the base class and in the child class. Method overloading is an example of static or compile time polymorphism because the binding of the function code with the function call happens during the compile time. Method overriding is an example of dynamic or runtime polymorphism because the binding of the function code with the call happens at the runtime when the object is created. Method overriding has arguments list that needs to differ. So that means in two or, same, two or more methods with the same name, the argument list has to be different. The difference can be in terms of the number of parameters or in the type of parameters. In overloading, the arguments have to be the exact same. It has to be the exact same match. In method overloading, the overloaded methods can have different access specifiers, which means that one can be a public method while the other can be a private method. But in method overriding, the overridden methods cannot be less accessible. And I have discussed this in my previous video where I have clearly told about dynamic polymorphism and the two conditions that had to be fulfilled. Please look for the link in the description box. In method overloading, the run types do not matter and can be same or different. Please note that in method overloading, the two methods with the same name are not differentiated based on the return types. While in method overriding, return types must be same or at least compatible. Now I will be talking about the third question. What is the difference between the is a relationship and the has a relationship? Inheritance defines the is a relationship. Class B extends A, that means class B is a class A. While aggregation and composition define the has a relationship. A class has a property or some properties and attributes. I'll be explaining this with an example. 
car is a vehicle. So when I'm designing this in a program, my vehicle becomes my base class while the car becomes my derived class. So car will extend my vehicle class. Now for explaining the has a relationship, a car has wheels and gears. So the relationship between the car and the wheel is a has a relationship. Car has wheels, a car has gears and similarly car will have other properties. I'll be explaining aggregation and composition later in this video. So please keep watching this video till the end. Moving on to my next question, which is very frequently asked and most people don't get it right in the first go. Why multiple inheritance is not supported by Java? Multiple inheritance is not supported in Java because it causes ambiguity in the code and makes it complex. It introduces a diamond ring problem. But first, we will understand the different types of inheritance, which are the single inheritance in which a derived class inherits the properties and behaviors of its parent class. Multi-level inheritance in which a child class is again inherited by another child class. So there is a hierarchy of inheritance. And then comes the multiple inheritance in which you have a derived class extending from two different base classes. Now let's see how the diamond ring problem is caused. When we have a base class A, which has a method do, and we have two classes, classes B and C, trying to extend class A and providing their own implementation of method do. Now let's assume class D extends class B and class C. And if we create an object of class D, which method do will be called? Will it be from class B or will it be from class C? And this is all about the diamond ring problem. So Java avoids multiple inheritance. Now let's discuss a slightly conceptual question where the interviewer is looking for your understanding of the concepts. Can we overwrite a private method in inheritance? In this question, you need to understand two things, overriding and private access, access specifier. Overriding is the technique in which the child class provides a different implementation of the base class method. While private access specifier is added for a method when we want to restrict the method's access to the same class. So the method is not visible outside the class. Now, if the method is not visible outside the class, it certainly cannot be overridden by a child class. And hence, private methods are not inherited by the child or the derived class and hence cannot be overridden. Moving on to the next question. What is data hiding and how is it achieved? Data hiding is the technique of hiding the internal details, that is the data members of a class. We need to declare our data members, often known as the instance variables, as private, so they are not directly accessible to the outside code for manipulation. Imagine that a car has gear as its attribute and it's accessible to the outside code and someone sets the gear attribute as zero. A car with no gears is not possible and hence we will make our class attributes as private so they can be accessible only within the class. To access the private properties, we have the getter and the setter methods that will be used to get and set the values of these instance variables. The getter and setter methods can be added with certain check conditions like for example, a car has to have a minimum of four gears. So we add this if condition in the set method before setting the value of the gears. Please note that even if you don't have any condition for checking, you still should add always the getter and the setter methods because we can use them later if required without changing any code. Adding getter and setter methods and making the instance variables as private provides data hiding. There's also one more thing to note that getter and setter methods will be declared as public so that the object can access them to check and set the values of the attributes. Moving on to the next question. Can you extend any class or is there a way to stop a class from inheriting another class? And I will say yes. In fact, there are three ways in which we can prevent a class from getting inherited. The first is making the class non-public. The class needs to be declared as public to be inherited. 
by default the class is not public and hence if we do not declare it public explicitly it cannot be inherited directly the second adding the keyword final we can add the final keyword to completely stop the child class from inheriting the base class nobody can ever extend a final class and the third way is to create a private constructor in the class we will be discussing constructors in the later video so for now you need to keep in mind that if we have a private constructor in a class you cannot inherit that class next question is about what is association composition and aggregation association is the relationship between two objects it defines the multiplicity between the objects aggregation is type of association and the related objects can exist independently but one object is the owner of the other composition is a restricted type of aggregation when one object cannot exist without another object now let's do it with an example association between a car and a mechanic a mechanic can fix multiple cars and similarly a car can be fixed by multiple mechanics so both the car and mechanic can exist independently of each other example of aggregation is when the car owner has multiple cars each of these cars will be driven by the same owner in aggregation one object is the owner of another here the car owner or the driver is the owner of the multiple cars so the car owner is one object which is the owner of multiple cars the third concept is co composition and the example for that is a car has wheels and wheels cannot exist without a car so in case a car is destroyed then the wheels alone are of no use so the wheels are typically dependent on the car object and cannot exist without the car object moving on to the next question is class and object the same thing or are they different a class is a blueprint using which an object can be created it is a template that describes the data and behavior associated with the data of the class using this template or blueprint you can create multiple objects while an object is an entity that will have certain properties and will exhibit certain behaviors software objects are modeled around real world objects so when you are seeing a car a scooter a laptop a pen a boat a plant a person all of these are objects which are real world entities and can also be translated into software objects the properties and behaviors of a class can be accessed using these objects let's move on to the next question what is the difference between local variables and instance variables an object exhibits certain properties which are called the instance variables of the class while it performs certain actions which are called the methods of the class we can declare certain variables inside these methods and these are called the local variables the value of the instance variables will be different from each other for each of the objects for example when we create multiple car objects each of them would have its own speed value and current care value even the methods might behave differently based on the value of these instance variables for example if you have a calculate distance method in the car class each of the calculate distance methods would result in a different distance based on the speed value a method can also take in values and operate on them and the value that it takes as an input parameter is called the local variables for example when we need to calculate the distance along with the speed we also need the time and the time can be taken as an input parameter for the calculate distance method the main difference between the local variables and the instance variables is that the instance variables have a default value if they are not initialized while the local variables do not get a default value and must be initialized before they are used going to the next question can you call a class methods without creating an instance of the class and yes the answer is we can definitely call the methods of a class without creating the instance of the class for which we have two ways the first is inheritance a child class can extend my class and then use the child class instance to call the parent class methods the second way is 
if we can declare our methods as static and use the class name to call the methods. I'll be discussing all about the static keyword in my later videos. Moving on to the last question of this video. What is the difference between encapsulation and abstraction? Abstraction is exposing information relevant to the user while hiding the internal details. While encapsulation is the wrapping of the data and the methods that operate on this data in one single unit. Please note the important thing between abstraction and encapsulation is that they are highly related but entirely different concepts. And I am going to be now discussing the differences. Abstraction is the hiding of the internal implementations or the complexities, while encapsulation is the hiding that provides data or information security. Abstraction is the technique of identifying what needs to be exposed and what needs to be hidden from the user, while encapsulation is the technique to pack this information in such a manner that we can achieve abstraction. In abstraction is the problem solving at the design level or the design phase, while encapsulation is solving the problem at the implementation level. We achieve abstraction through interfaces and abstract classes, while we achieve encapsulation through access specifiers, getter and setter methods. Now going to the examples of abstraction and encapsulation. When we are hiding the internal workings of an accelerator, gears, engines of a car, it is called abstraction. While we are making the fields such as gear and height of a car private, then it is encapsulation. This is my list of all the important questions on the OOPS concepts. If there are any other questions that I have not covered in this video, please put them in the comment box. And if I get multiple requests, I'll surely make a video of all those questions and answers. Please do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get the latest updates. I'll also be providing a kit link for this video in the description box so that you can download it later and refer it anytime. Thanks for watching. Thank you.